Well, Paul, thank you so much for joining me, man. I really appreciate having you here. Oh, it's nice to hear your voice, my man. I love your poster. You got your setup there. You look like you're an action hero yourself. <laughs> I'll take that any day. Um, my first question for you, which you've probably been asked a million times to impress for this movie, would be, um, what drew you to the script? Well, I mean, first off is I, I love the genre. I love action. I love the seasonal vibe of them pulling Christmas into the movie. You know, the bank robbery heists and, and you know, the payoffs and the great cathartic ending. But most of all, you know, um, they gave me a character that was profound, that had heartache in his past. It was trying to make a big change in the world. So he had a huge, um, uh, you know, a massive, um, he was selling a big dream to these people. And then at the very end, it was an opportunity, did you forget to pay the light bulb? <laughs> <laughs> and then at the very end, I got to work with, you know, uh, one of the greatest film icons, uh, you know, of our generation, you know, Bruce. So it was a thrill. So when you read, uh, well, when you got the script and you read it, did you instantly know that, the character of Donovan would be one that you would love to just play? I thought I was playing um, Ricky. Oh, Ricky Donovan, is that my yeah. last name? Oh yeah. my God. I was sitting there going, Donovan, did I play Donovan? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I, I always went by my first name, but uh, yes, Ricky Donovan, of course. Um, you know, it's funny, you know, he's a guy that is um, bigger than life. Um, you know, in another time he would have been you know, a, a televangelist, or he would have been a, a self-help guru, or he would have been, you know, a tremendous, and he was a tremendous military leader before he was, you know, thrown into uh, prison uh, for his actions. So, you know, the guy has definitely got a tremendously good qualities. The problem is, is that, you know, when you lose something, um, a child, uh, or anything of value like that, you know, I think what happens is, you know, your mind breaks, because your heart breaks. And so I think what happened was he'd he no longer cared about, you know, the social norms. He was looking to make the world a better place. But he, unfortunately, he was trying to do it in sort of the, um, you know, the uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, the diabolical way of of, of in nefarious, you know, uh, uh, violence as opposed to, you know, uh, the type of change that takes generations. He was trying to do it immediately. And that that's always violent. And Edward Drake, he's brilliant. He's a brilliant writer. He's a brilliant he director. What would you do? You reckon we should try and convince him to get pen to paper to have like a Donovan prequel story? Well, I mean, here's the thing. You know, I think I don't know. I mean, sometimes I think we just let you know let things um, sort of be what they are. Like I wouldn't want to remake certain movies because I think that you know you've. You've, you've sucked out every great piece you can. And then somebody's better just put your energy towards something new and fresh and go that way. I've read other things that Edward's written, and he is a tremendous talent. He's written a script uh, recently that I read that I thought that he hasn't made yet. Uh, I think it's next up for him. That is a beautiful and profound and uh, really poignant story, you know, about faith and uh and and belief in god and i think it's it's really well well scripted um i think it's gonna be tremendous but working with him was a blessing because you know he's non-restrictive he lets you uh take a lot of chances as an actor um he doesn't he rarely pulls you in um he usually just lets you let you fly and uh and it's willing to uh and sometimes you're gonna fall on your face but i think that's 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 what's great about you know art art isn't about safety you know, art is about, you know, taking risks and Edward recognizes that. And I really applaud him. And I felt very, very grateful that I had an opportunity to work with him. And you also got to work with the icon that is Bruce Willis. Um, how does it feel to kind of bookend his career in a Christmas movie when he started in the genre in a Christmas movie? That must That's be quite surreal. Yeah, no, that's I never even thought of it that way. And all in between, you know, he avoided it. And then he ended up doing a, a Christmas movie at the end. But you want to know something. Um, he has tremendous presence when he comes on the set. Um, you know, he's it's got a quiet strength that just draws everybody to him. He's 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 got that movie star value, you know, that you can just look at him and walk in. If he wasn't an actor, you'd still be drawn to him. He has that that power. He's very magnetic. 
um, did you watch the first movie before you jumped into the second one, or did you just go in and just dive in? I, I read the script for the first, second, and third, um, but I don't think the first one had been cut yet. I think they were still in the process of uh, putting it together. So I didn't have the opportunity to, to watch it. And I'm kind of glad that I didn't. I'm kind of glad that I was coming in fresh and being able to not be totally influenced by the other film. I wanted, I kind of want this film to stand on its own. And I think it does have a different vibe than the other film. Definitely you know? it does. Um, also, your character is involved in about 98% of the action sequences. What was your favorite action sequence to shoot? <laughs> Be a lot easier if you said, what was your favorite action sequences not to shoot? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's cold. It was cold. We, were, we did shoot in December, so it was a bit chilly. So um, I remember um, the scene where, where, well, I'm not sure I want to give away the ending, but let's just say this. Uh, there's a big ending, and it's, you know, after all the bank robberies and all the cats and mouse games with Bruce and I trying to get each other, the big ending scene where we actually are face-to-face, -face, um, you know, I was silly enough to think that I don't need back pads when I get thrown into the front of a moving truck. And uh, I mean, let me just put it this way. Um, I, I couldn't sit for about a week. I had to, I had to stand. I landed on, um, on uh, you know, the, uh, the other, uh, uh, I don't know, the, my least favorite side of me. Pretty hard. <laughs> Speaking of your least favorite side, um... oh. Bruce Willis went to, well, mentioned he was going to shove a Christmas tree up there. That's right. He did. Um, mention that. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, let's just say that you know, hopefully he was thinking about one of those little trees <laughs> and not the big pines or the sequoias or that they, that they have out there in Vancouver Island. See, when you two were spewing lines at each other, did you just go off the whim or did you stick to the script? That was not in the script, that line. He made that line. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's the great thing about Edward was, you know, I mean, um, we, we, we stuck to uh, the script for the most part, but, you know, he would let it long roll sometimes. And sometimes he would just sort of like, you know, if, if something would come to us, he was very open about, about that. But I think that the best part about working with Edward was that, you know, you knew that you were – a lot of times when you're shooting a scene and they've, they've got a wide shot, they've got a medium shot, they've got a moving shot, they've got a close up. You always know that with Edward, because he's very creative with the way he moves the camera, was that you don't have to save your performance. All of the stuff that you're doing is going to get seen. So I didn't have to, like, wait for my close up to really let the shit go. <laughs> Sorry for saying go. Um, but uh, you understand, like he I knew that he was going to, to capture it. You know, a lot of actors worry about that, that you kind of like save it. But, uh, you know, because you can get burnt out, especially, you know, well into a movie after you've been on it for a long time. And see your character, you play it to a T, like you steal the movie completely. Uh -oh. you know, I'm real, man. Um, just got to ask, do you prefer playing villains to heroes? Because you always your characters always seem to have a villainous side. It's funny because I'm a dad of an 11 year old boy and he only sees me as like good guy, happy dad, you know, rewarding him, going for walks. You know, we're we're best friends. It's like I'm like the guy that helps his drives his kid, you know, his friends to the games. He has never seen me play a bad guy. But when people come up to me and ask for autographs or they come on and want to meet me, my son kind of looks at me. And he's like, he's like, dad. They, why do they always think that you're like the bad guy? He doesn't know that that's what I play. He knows I'm an actor, but he hasn't seen my stuff, right? So it's really interesting because he doesn't see me in that way. But I think that you have to be a good bad character. I wouldn't say bad guy because I don't know if you could really play a bad guy unless you're, you know, unless you're like hamming it up. The truth is, is every great performance is, is locked in some truth. And, and I think what it is, is if you are motivations or your character's background are all spurring you towards taking some pretty uh, horrific uh, choices in life. It's driven usually by pain or driven by suffering or driven by something that's motivating that. So I try to connect that really well into my character. So I'm not just, you know, coming across as this, you know, um, sort of empty shell uh, and just acting bad to be bad. I want there to be something, but certainly this guy who's creating a cult is creating a cult to change the world because of the tremendous loss he suffered by his son being killed. 
So he's trying to to make amends, you know, and change the world for a better place. So it doesn't happen to anybody else's kids, which he does in some of his beautiful speeches that, that this character gives. So after the release of this movie, can we expect to see you in any more action movies? Well, I mean, Lionsgate's releasing it. I, I, I gave them my phone number. I'm waiting. Oh, there they are. Yeah, they're offering me a movie right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be me and Liam Neeson in Taken Part 5, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, listen, I'm, 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 uh, I'm excited to do good scripts and good projects. I'm excited to work with good people. You know, certainly, I, I mean, I, I just, it's, I'm not really looking particularly for action or particularly for any genre. I'm looking for good characters that allow me to play and to explore and to have great moments, you know, and not just sort of a, a one-dimensional ride. I certainly want to, I want a very fulfilling experience and I want to give that to my audiences because I think that's what audiences is. But audiences are sophisticated nowadays. They're, they're very, they've really come a long way. This light keeps going off. I'm getting I like in the dark here. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, congratulations on the release of the movie. Thank um, you. you were stabbing it. Now. Thank you for that compliment. And I can't wait to get you back on and chew your ear some more of the filmography. Anytime, man. Let's do it. Let's let's have a real deep cinephile conversation. We'll get into it. I look forward to it, Paul. Congratulations on the movie and take care, my man. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, brother.